Hey guys, welcome back to Swat Tools. This will be a cube uh, tutorial on how you can use region render or crop region on sequence or batch render in Arnold for Maya. So everyone knows you can use the region render in the interactive render on the Arnold render view. You can use this by clicking this button to enable it and clicking and dragging on the render to render only that area of the render making faster iterations and finding out the shaders or lighting how it works on that particular region so i'm going to show you a way where you can use the same crop region in a batch render or sequence render when you are rendering sequence so the use of this will be if you have like a huge set of scene where you have infinite elements which is rendered in a single layer and and I'm just showing you this uh, symbol scene as an example, but consider you have like huge buildings or uh, trees, like a forest scene or a huge city scene where you have a lot of elements which are present in the scene and you are rendering it in a single layer. Somehow you happen to have made a mistake or there was a change in some of the elements which you need to re-render. And usually what we do is you will make that into a separate layer and you can render this in the separate layer and merge it on top of the render but consider a situation where you can't separate that element from that particular layer so what you can do for that is that first you have to come to the outliner and by default it will show only the elements and lights which is present in the scene but if you right click on it you can see this tick mark on the attribute show dag objects only so if you uncheck this you will see all the shaders or textures or any other elements which are already present in the scene uh, the AOVs or anything if you have animations you will see curves there so since I am animating this sphere here you can also see the spheres animation curves as well here from here you have to check for Arnold default Arnold render options in here if you see its attributes there is particular attribute called regions so here by default if you open your Maya it will be in negative values which means it's not active in the scene so if let's say i am using a crop region here and if i go to the display settings and you see here the pixel x and y so what this means is if you move your mouse cursor on the scene it will show you here the x and y coordinate values of that particular render view in here so if i move my cursor to the top left corner of the region render you can see that the x coordinate is 178 and the y coordinate is 191 so here we have to add region minimum x max x minimum y and max y i'll show you how to find the min and max x and y coordinate values here the minimum x and y coordinate values will be visible in the top left of the crop region so this part coordinates will be the minimum x and y values so our minimum x will be 176 and minimum y will be 192 so if i put 176 and 192 here and then if i go to the bottom right of the crop region you can get the maximum x and maximum y values so it will be 523 and 552 so i am putting 523 and 552 here if i remove the crop region and if i update the full scene you can see only the part where i put the crop region before is rendering now because i have enabled these values here let's check this by i'm turning off the light here and it's only rendering the same area again this is the way we can use crop region into the render settings another interesting thing will be that it can be keyed you can add keys into this so let's say i want to move this region render according to the balls animation so i can key it so that it will so as i was saying we can key it in the region uh, min max x and y coordinate so that when you do the sequence render it will render only those parts according to the keying which we have done so for that i'm gonna quickly see where i can first start the keying so here the ball is completely visible on the frame so i'll start my keying from here so on the fifth frame i'm gonna do a complete crop region because it starts from all the way left if you see here 
we will need those parts as well. So from here, I'm going to read the pixel values. So the min and max will be zero and 205. So I'm going to put min x zero and min y 205. And I'm going to right click and do a set key. So those are keyed and again, come back to the bottom right corner and I'm going to see the values 345 and 568. So three, four, five, and three, four, five, five, six, eight. Okay. So again, key. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to render it again. And this time I'm going to move it. So if this one is enabled, you can see if I update the scene, it will only render this one. So if you shift click on the viewport, it will temporarily disable this on your interactive render and I'm gonna see the last frame closer to the last frame and here you can add another frame so here what you can understand is that since my animation is only moving in the uh, x direction I don't need to key the y coordinates because it's not moving on the y coordinates it's only moving in the x so I can remove keys from the min and max y coordinates here because it's not going to move on the y so I just need to key it only on the x so let's again do the render okay I'm going to key again on the frame 20 so again I'm going to do a region render here and see from here I'm only going to take the um, x the minimum x will be 930 so I'm going to put 930 here and again set key and the maximum will be since my resolution is 1280 by 720 the maximum x will be 1280 so I'm putting 1280 here and again setting key so let's see how the render is coming and let's see how the keying is coming in the render so you can see only the particular part is keyed with it but you can see some of them the keying is not coming accurately because if you go to the animation editor and graph editor you can see the keying here it has a curvature which uses ease in and ease out on the curve but if you see the animation on the ball it's a linear curve so we have to match the curve so that the crop region will exact match with the animation so going back again to the render options and i'm going to select both of the animation curves and i'm going to put it on linear so let's come back again and see if it's working properly or not so you can see the interactive region is is having this kind of uh, unfinished render parts out of the crop region but that doesn't matter it's only visible in the interactive render and also if you check the alpha you see the alpha will be showing as a complete alpha but that is only visible in the interactive render if you do the batch render it will be properly visible so let's do a batch render and see if this one is working or not here is my animation with the whole layer and another render which only uses the crop region so when i merge it you can see it's a seamless animation there is a slight edge issue here so i'll need to extend the edge again a bit more so maybe the indirect or the shadow is casting more here or it could be that the low sampling so you can see it's a noise here i was using low sample and denoising for quick renders because that may be the issue here if i keep both the original render and the crop region other render here you can barely see any difference here so try this for yourself and see if it saves you some render time one last thing i want to talk to you is that even can try using this in the layers which have only isolated uh, layers so if you see here uh, i have already isolated the sphere animation here and even if there is no other things in the layer you can use the crop region here as well so that you can save some time which render uses to render this black areas you can see there is some time which the render uses to sample the black areas even if there is nothing 
in there it will save you a couple of seconds if that matters to you or else you don't need to you know go into this kind of crazy things you can always use it only when it is completely necessary so that's all i wanted to talk to you about in this tutorial and i hope it is helpful for you in your projects and if you like this give me a thumbs up and if there is any doubts or if you want to ask any questions do let me know in the comments and i'll definitely answer for you and if you want me to make tutorials on any particular subjects do let me know that also in the comments and in the next tutorial we will learn how to use render masks which will be another method like crop region where you can use use masks on the render to use it more like a crop region so the benefit will be that for shapes which are not exactly rectangular you can create particular shapes or custom shapes and apply that to the render mask and it will render only those particular regions so i'll see you with that tutorial soon till then it's swat signing off bye